So if the number modulus current number is gives us a remainder of zero, then that proves that what that proves that then that, that, that division is an even division. So in our case, let's keep track of it, even, even divisions. Let's add one to the variable even divisions, right? So even divisions is going to be equal to what's already stored in even divisions, okay, plus one. Okay, so if so if even divisions held zero, this is going to result in zero plus one. And zero plus one gives you one, and one is going to be stored in even divisions. If even divisions stored, let's say five, it's going to be five. We are we are always adding one to it, right? So it's going to be five plus one. This is going to be six, and six is going to be stored in even divisions. So basically we are keeping track, we are accumulating the number of even divisions. Okay. Now what if you are dividing, what if the user typed in, let's say, a thousand, right? Based on how we've written our program, it's going to divide a thousand by one, a thousand by two, a thousand by three, all the way to a thousand by a thousand, okay? So a thousand by one, a thousand by two, it's going to go all the way to a thousand by five hundred, a thousand by seven hundred, seven hundred and one, a thousand by nine hundred, all the way to a thousand by a thousand. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's a, a, a lot of calculations, right? We don't want to wait for the program to do all the, all that calculation, check to see if even divisions is is two uh, is two uh, before we, it can tell us that, that number is prime or not. We want to go ahead and as soon as we anytime we add one to the even divisions, what we want to do is go ahead and check to see if even divisions is greater than two. Because as soon as even divisions is greater than two, that number doesn't qualify to be prime. But a prime number only has to have two even divisions. Right, so we can we can we can over here even divisions. We can keep on adding adding one to it and wait for the program to basically have um, do all the calculations. But after we've added one to the even divisions, right? Let's check because as soon as even divisions is is greater than two, it's not it's not a prime number. If it stays two, or if it's exactly two, then that number is a prime number. So as soon as we add one to it, let's check to see if even divisions. Okay, if even divisions. Is greater than two. What we want to do is return false. That means that that number is not a prime number because for a prime number you should there's um, you should have only two even divisions, right? So to give an example, just just to go through this. Um, so if you have let's say a number, let's say four, right? Four. So the program based on how we've written it is going to start from one uh, all the way to the number it's all the way to four so four divided by one it's going to start dividing and it's going to start dividing whatever the, uh, the user type which is four by one okay and keep on dividing from, you know by one all the way to the number itself so it's going to start with four divided by one right four divided by one which gives us one remainder zero right so it, it, because it, uh, that division gives us a, the number itself divided by a current number. Current number is keeping track of the numbers from one all the way to the number itself, right? Because the first division gave us a remainder of zero, we had one even division. So we added one to even divisions. And it checked to see if even divisions is greater than two. It's not greater than two, it's, th it's one. So the loop I trace again. And then it divides four by two. We get two remainder zero. So that's another even division, right? So we add one to even divisions and even even divisions becomes two and it checks is even divisions greater than two now now two is not greater than two right two is equal to two two is not greater than two so in that case it doesn't return false the loop iterates again and then it divides four by three now four by three doesn't give us an even division right so in that case it doesn't add one to even divisions and it check uh, actually in that case this doesn't even run, okay? Because for this to run, this if statement has to, you know, be be entered, okay? Or it has to, it has, or this has to be true. Because if this is true, then you know it does whatever is in the block of that if statement. So because it doesn't give us a remainder of zero, okay, that means it's it's not an even division. So none of this is going to run. It's just going to go and iterate again. And then finally, it's going to divide four by four. Four divided by four gives us a remainder of one, oh, sorry, sorry, four divided by four gives us an answer of one, but remainder zero. And because it gives us a remainder of zero, now remember, even divisions was two, right? So because it gives us a remainder of zero, now even divisions is going to go up by one. Okay, we're going to add one to it. So now even divisions becomes becomes three, right? 
and it's going to go ahead and check. Is even divisions is, is even divisions greater than two? If, if even divisions is greater than two, which is which it is, right? Because three will be greater than two. In that case, as soon as even divisions is greater than two, it's not, that number is not a prime number because for a prime number again you should have two exactly two even divisions. So in that case, we're going to return false and say that oh that that number is not prime. If we didn't have this check, it would it would it would keep on going. Assuming we had a number like, like let's say nine or even or even a thousand, you would have so many even divisions in there, you know, all the way to a thousand. You don't want to wait before you uh, before you check. Okay, you don't want to wait before you check. You wait to all all the you know basically all the you know the the the, um, the the division and and the check is done here before you check to see if even division is greater than two. As soon as you add one to even divisions, check to see if even even divisions has increased or or, or or is greater than two. And if it is, just just end it because if you if you wait, it's still going to work. If you wait till all the calculations are done, it's still going to work. But you don't want to do that. It, it's it's going to slow your program and you know it's it's a waste of you know. But you want you want to be you want your program to be fast you know. And as soon as things happen, as soon as you don't want something, you just ignore it or you just um, reject it. So that's what we're doing here. We're checking every time. You know, even divisions goes up by one to see if it's greater than two. If it's if it's greater than two, then there's no point in going ahead with the program because that number is not prime. All right. Now, now, so this is what we have so far. Now we've checked to see if that number is less than or equal to one. That, then that if, if the number is less than or equal to one, then that means that the number is not prime, right? And over here, it's also going to check and make sure that after you've taken a number and divided by one all the way to the number itself, it's going to make sure that that number has exactly two even divisions. Okay. If that number doesn't have exactly two even divisions, it's going to return false. Okay, if that number doesn't have exactly two even divisions, that means that that number is not a prime number. So it's going to go ahead and return false. But if the program, if the number manages to pass all of these and has two even divisions, okay, or basically if the number is not less than or equal to one, okay, meaning meaning it's, it's greater than than one, and it, and the number, you know, doesn't have um, if, um, m m more than two even divisions. If the number doesn't have more than two even divisions, then None of these, you know, you know, it's not going to return false over here, and it's not going to return false over here. It pro it proves that the number is prime, okay? Because in in the first place, you are not negative, you are not zero, you're not one over here. So you've passed that. You've also if if it, if the number manages to pass, you know, pass this block also, okay? And then it, then the number has proven that it ha it has le it's, uh, so it, it has proven that it it doesn't have even divisions more than two, okay? Because th this is checking to make sure the number has exactly two even divisions. As soon as the number has m more than two even divisions, that, that that number is not prime, so it's going to go ahead and return false. Okay, so if the number passes all of these, then that proves that the number is a prime number. So in that case, right outside the loop, okay, outside all the if statements, outside the loop over here, okay, outside the loop over here, we want to go ahead and return true because if the if the number manages to bypass all of these, then that number is a prime number. Okay, it didn't, it didn't, it passed all of this check. Okay, this check is to make sure that number is truly a prime number. And if you're not a prime number, this is going to catch you here. Sorry, this whole block here is going to catch you and return false. It's going to return false. But if the number manages to bypass this, then that number is a prime number. So all we're going to do, all we're going to do is just return true. And you should also know that anytime it hits the program hits one of these statements, return any anytime any, so anytime one of these is true and, and it returns, let's say for example, if it gets here and it returns false, the program the loop, sorry, the function exits. It doesn't continue what's below it. Anytime it hits a return statement, okay, anytime it, it this it, this statement is run, that's it. Anytime this statement is run, that's it. This nothing else is run. As soon as this a return statement is run, the program exits. So if it returns false over here, that's it. The pro, um, it's done. It's, this function is done. If it returns false over here, this function is done. It doesn't even move on to do any any of this. So yeah, so if it manages to bypass this block here, then that mean that shows that the number is prime. Okay, so now we're done with the function. Now all we have to do is go ahead and test the program. So let's go ahead and de and define a main function. Now the main function is like a f is a function th that that is run or, or that's automatically called in most programming languages um, when you start when you start your program. Okay, when you run your program, the main function is the function or the, uh, the first function that's called. And basically, 
contains your program. It basically has everything in there. It, it's the function that calls every other function. Okay, so it's, it's the function that we should create and then call call to. Okay. Again, in, pro in most programming languages, the main function is it's it's the function that's called the first function that's called when, when your program is run, and and it contains everything. It contains calls to all of the functions. It calls every other function. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and define a main function. It's not going to accept any argument, so so we don't have to define any parameters. And th this is where we're going to actually run our program. Okay, so let's see. So it says write a boolean function named is prime, which takes an integer as an argument and returns true if the number is a prime number or false otherwise. We've done that. Now it says use this function in a program that prompts the user to enter a number and then displays a message indi indicating whether the number is prime. Okay, so we know we are going to create a program, create pro which we are going to do in main over here. And the program is going to prompt the user to enter a number, right? So let's do that. Let's use the input function to prompt the user to enter a number, right? So I'm going to use the input function and type in, please enter a number. And we know the input function is basically going to display well, well, not 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 all of you know. So you know, so so if if you know if you know good, if you don't know good, good too, because we're 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 learning. So the input function basically displays this message to the user: "Please enter a number," and it pops up. It pops out some kind of text box and allows the user to enter a response. And then, so whatever the user typed or the types, okay, is going to be returned as a string. Over here, we're asking the user to enter a number, right? Even though it's asking the user to enter a number, the user can decide to enter, let's say, I mean, the user will let's say, will let's say decide to enter, let's say, two, right? But it, the way the input function works by default is it returns everything you type into it as a string. Even if you type in a number, it's going to return that number as a string. That's how it works. But the thing is, we can't use numbers in calculations. We can't use numbers, you know, the way we want to use it in this program, okay? So we have to go ahead and convert whatever is being returned as a string to a number so we can use it. In this case, we want it returned to an, um, we, we want it converted to an integer, right? Because if the user enters two and it and returns two as a string, we have to convert two to an integer before we can use it. So because we want to convert it to an integer, I'm going to go ahead and call the int function and then surround everything that the user has typed with parentheses. parentheses. In other words, we are basically converting everything that the user has typed into an integer, right? And once we do that, we need a place to store it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable, and I'm going to call it user number. Okay, and user number is basically going to store whatever is being returned by the input function converted to an integer. Okay, so that, that's what's going to happen. Actually, I'm going to call this also user number, not not because of anything, just to sh to, to just to show you that you can you can have the same names here, and it doesn't affect your program. This variable here. Okay, so that means I have to also you change this to user number and change this to user number. And yes. So I'm just doing this just to show that this these two names can be the same. It doesn't you don't, you don't have to give them different names. So user number here, this variable, the scope of this variable is within the is prime function. Okay? It's only seen in the scope of it is only in this is prime function. The scope of this user number variable is in the main function. They, they don't see each other. Although they look the same, they don't see each other. They're, they're like twins, but they're not the same. So you can use, this is just a, a variable um, referring to or referencing the parameter. It's just like a placeholder. It's a variable get name for the placeholder. Um, Oh, you know, for for this, for basically, it's a placeholder for the for the arguments that the user is going to type in. And over here, in main, it's a different function altogether, so they don't see each other, right? These are considered two different fun two different variables because they are in two different functions. Okay, I did that just to show that you can have the same names and and it wouldn't affect your program. Also, al although you can have you know you can name it different names just so it's clear to you uh, whichever one wor works for you. So we've Accepted the user's number. Uh, sorry, the, the user's number here. Now all we have to do is pass it in the is prime function and check to to, um, to see if it's prime. Prime. It's going to return true if the number is prime, or return false if the number is not prime. Right. So this is what we're going to do. Um, 
so if you if you just go ahead right if you just um j just so we see how it works i'm just going to type in a print function call this prime function right and and provide an argument of let's say five i'm not going to use a user's number i'm just testing this of let's say five 